Starship has been destacked again. What's going on? We'll try and work out the answer. We have more ships tested, more vehicles built, lots of progress on the Star Factory, and even a Cybertruck show off in this week's Starbase update. Let's kick it off with SpaceX's Star Factory building, where new hardware has been seen this week under its roof. At least two barrel sections can now be seen stored inside of the newest part of this facility. One of them appears to be Booster 14's common dome section, which gives a really good indication of how the production process is going at Starbase for future vehicles. It's only a matter of time until barrel sections like this one are actually made inside of this portion of the building. For now, it's only serving as a place of storage. While these ongoing activities are in progress, crews are diligently adding the final details to the interior of the northern section of the building. This area already boasts roof and wall panels as part of its structural components. Perhaps in the coming days or weeks, equipment and tools will be brought in through the doors and installed. We will certainly keep a close watch on the progress as it unfolds. Closer to Highway 4, construction crews are making progress on the taller section of the Star Factory expansion. This specific area is where SpaceX plans to manufacture Starship nose cones given its greater height, making it the only part of the building suitable for their construction and hosting. While we have previously discussed this in our Starbase update, it's always beneficial to provide a reminder for context. Discussing this also raises the question, with SpaceX constructing Starship sections within a dedicated facility, is it possible that they will create a location for loading satellites onto the ships? It's worth considering these possibilities as they can spark debate and discussion in the comments down below. Returning to this section of the Star Factory, it's evident that the roof installation is in progress and it's being done using prefabricated pieces. This approach appears to enable simultaneous tasks accelerating the construction process. Roof sections can be constructed while columns are still being installed to support them. Consequently, once the columns are in place, the prefabricated roof sections can be swiftly lifted and installed, resulting in time savings throughout the process. Also at the production site, we have witnessed the birth of a new spacecraft within the high bay. Ship 31, which had been in the process of stacking for approximately a month, is now fully assembled, with its after dome section having been welded to the rest of the vehicle just this week. For those counting at home, this is now the sixth completely stacked ship at Starbase, all in different stages of their lives. The family now ranges from 25 through to 31, although Rest in peace, Ship 27. However, the life of a Starship doesn't solely revolve around its stacking process. While we have discussed this previously, one could contend that stacking is, in fact, the comparatively simpler aspect of the construction. After all, it primarily involves lifting a barrel section and welding it onto another one, and then repeating this process. Much more challenging than stacking a task such as installing over 15,000 heat shield tiles on the spacecraft or implementing all the necessary wiring and piping. This intricate work demands a significant number of labour hours to accomplish. This is precisely why Ship 30 has been positioned in the northwest corner of the high bay for quite some time. In this corner, a series of scaffolds provides the crews with access to the leeward side of the ship, enabling them to carry out various tasks within its tank, raceway and other components. The next phase involves relocating it to the corner directly ahead, closer to the entrance. In this location, another set of scaffolds has been set up to facilitate the crew's work on the tiles and provide ample space for the installation of the ship's aft flaps. Fast forward several weeks later and the ship, now complete, rolls to the Massey's test site for cryoproof testing. This is exactly where Ship 29 is right now. Ship 29 has now completed three tests while sitting on the ship thrust simulator stand. Two of these tests occurred last week while the third occurred just a few days ago. However, this latest test had a significantly shorter duration and only a small amount of frost was observed on the vehicle before it was detanked. The reason for this abrupt conclusion is unclear, but it is evident that the test was cut short. We will need to keep an eye on the situation to figure out whether Ship 29 will do another test or roll back to the production site. 
Another noteworthy event of the week was the arrival of a Tesla Cybertruck at Starbase. It seems that Tesla may have utilised this location, affiliated with its sister company SpaceX, to capture artistic photographs and videos of the Cybertruck. One of the initial sightings of this car occurred during fit checks with the system that would subsequently be utilised to tow RVAC engine serial number 305. Similar to numerous other engines, this one had been stored in the support building directly behind the Mega Bay before being extracted and paraded around with the assistance of the Cybertruck. Before that, the car seemed to have done a few test drives around the pad without the engine, performing a few laps around the orbital launch mount and driving up and down Highway 4. This was later repeated, but with the engine being towed by the Cybertruck and a camera crew filming the whole process. It appears that Tesla took advantage of the opportunity to use a striking backdrop like a fully stacked Starship for promotional purposes and to capture artistic shots of the car. The Cybertruck was also seen driving along Highway 4 with the RVAC engine near sunset. However, during this portion of the event, it seems that a drone was inadvertently struck by the engine. Fortunately for the drone, it was hit by the engine in this manner and not, for instance, when it was attached to a Starship and being ignited. That would likely have resulted in a more unfortunate outcome. While the full stack was a really great backdrop for the Tesla Cybertruck show-off at Starbase this week, it didn't last for long. In the meantime, our photographer Sean seized the opportunity to capture stunning shots of the entire stack while it was still whole. Take, for instance, this striking sunrise photograph or this photo of the Cybertruck towing the RVAC. Images like these and many more are made accessible early to our members at Red Team or above, and the best of the best make their way onto metal prints, which you can grab from shop.nasaspaceflight.com. But as I said, sadly, this state of affairs was short-lived as Ship 25 was subsequently de-stacked from Booster 9. This development is particularly noteworthy because just last week, SpaceX had announced on Twitter that both vehicles had been assembled and they were in the process of collaborating with the FAA on securing a launch license. This situation raises the question of the purpose behind stacking the vehicles on this occasion. From an external standpoint, one might speculate that this most recent full stack was a preliminary assembly to assess the modifications made to either the booster's forward dome or the hot stage ring. We see your comments and we share the same sentiment. The entire situation does appear to be quite chaotic with delays, stacking, de-stacking, restacking and now another de-stacking. It can be described as a significant whiskey tango foxtrot moment all around. However, for those of us who have been involved in this field for a long time, it's a familiar feeling. In due course, we will reflect and recognise that in the broader perspective, all of this chaos holds limited significance. Besides, it seems that with the recent de-stacking action, SpaceX may have avoided a potentially challenging situation, as there was an approaching storm at Starbase later that day. While it remains uncertain whether the storm was indeed the cause for de-stacking, one might assume that, if it were, they would have already proceeded with a restacking operation. As of now, we have not received any updates indicating that the vehicles have been restacked, but it's possible that by the time you're viewing this, there may have been further developments on that front. Regardless of the circumstances, it appears that SpaceX intends to conduct work on the booster. Scaffolding has been reinstated at the orbital launch mount, suggesting that work is underway inside its liquid oxygen tank. It's possible that the teams are carrying out final adjustments and additional tasks to enhance the likelihood of a successful outcome during the next Starship flight. Given the importance of maximising their chances for success, they will undoubtedly continue to make such efforts. Additional ongoing work at the launch pad includes the planned upgrades to the tank farm, which we've discussed in previous videos. These upgrades entail the installation of subcoolers and pumps for future use. The piping required for the new liquid oxygen subcoolers has been delivered this week and we can anticipate its installation in the near future. However, merely installing the equipment does not guarantee its functionality. Teams will need to access the current pipework at the tank farm and connect the new hardware to make it operational. This process is time consuming and would also temporarily render the tank farm inoperable. Therefore, we're anticipating that this work will take place after the next flight rather than before. This week we also saw the LR11000 crane being disconnected from Ship 26, indicating that work on this vehicle may be temporarily halted. Additionally, there are new closures scheduled for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, each from 8am to 8pm local time. This suggests that there might be something noteworthy happening with Ship 26 during this week, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for any testing coverage. Also consider turning on notifications. 
I know everybody says that, but in our case, it's actually quite useful. When we spool up dedicated Starship coverage, you get a ping on your phone. We don't always know when these things are happening, so you can't really plan ahead. This ship currently has all six of its engines installed, which theoretically makes it capable of undergoing engine testing. However, as is often the case, it's difficult to predict the exact sequence of the test campaign. It's possible they may start with a cryogenic test, followed by a spin prime and ultimately a static fire. Alternatively, they might skip some of these steps and proceed directly to a static fire test. You are all welcome to share your predictions in the comments and we can see whose guesses turn out to be accurate. If you want a definitive way to figure out what's going to happen and keep up with the tests at Starbase, definitely check out our Starbase Live 24-7 livestream. I'm Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching and goodbye.